Yes, man, how is it going? Welcome back to the channel. And what we're going to be doing today is a Premier League table prediction for the 2020-21 Premier League season. So you are new to the channel, make sure to go down below, hit a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Turn notifications on as well while you are down there so you get updated when we do go live or upload a brand new video. So let's not do too much messing around in this video, let's just get straight into it. I just wanted to say before we do get into it, these are purely based on my opinion and what I believe will happen. We'll go back at the end of the season, we'll have a look at it, we'll have a laugh if I've got a few wrong and we'll just see how well I did predict it at the end of the season. So anyway boys, let's not mess around, get straight into this video. Starting off in 20th, we've got Fulham and I just think they will go down. I don't think they signed too many players so far that are Premier League worthy, they signed Harrison Reed and a few other players. I just don't think they have the quality to what it takes to be in the Premier League. Obviously, they spent 150 million last time they were in the Premier League, and I'd say they had a better squad then as well. And the Premier League's only improved since they went down and got back promoted this season. I personally think there's only really Mitrovic in that team that is really Premier League quality. You've got Rodak as well, he's a decent keeper. I don't think a goalkeeper can really keep a team up. Let me know how you think Fulham will do this season down below. Give me your predictions down below as well while we're here. In 19th place, I've gone with West Bromwich Albion. They got promoted last season for the first time in quite a few years, actually. I personally don't think they have the quality in attack to what it takes to break down a Premier League defence week in, week out. They just announced the signing of Grady Ganga. I think that's a great signing. 16 million, that is quite a lot of money, to be fair, for a West Ham player that is not the first team starter and obviously went on loan for certain reasons. They just signed Pereira for 8 million this summer as well. I think that's a great bit of business. Fantastic player. He was great in the championship. Probably one of the best, if not the best. He's done a decent bit of business so far, but I just don't think they have that striker. They're obviously getting Callum Robinson, but I don't think they're getting the striker there that will get them goals consistently in the Premier League. I think Austin's passed it now, and I just don't see Robinson being the player that's going to get you goals. In the final relegation place, I've gone for Aston Villa. I said for them to go down last season, and they didn't go down, so fair play to them for staying up. You know, it went right down to the wire, didn't it? But it turned out that a dodgy Hawkeye decision kept them up. I personally just think they'll go down this season. Dean Smith is not a great manager for me. He's one of the worst managers in the league, if not the worst. They've always got some fantastic players like Jack Grealish and John McGinn. They've just signed Nottingham Forest right back Matty Cash. I think that's a fantastic addition to the side. They could definitely stay up, but it all depends. There's so many teams down there in this season that could potentially go down. It's really hard to call it. In 17th place, just surviving the drop, I have gone for Crystal Palace. I feel like they'll just survive the drop this season due to players they've got like Jordan Ayew. They've got a very solid defence as well. They don't concede that many goals. And they've obviously got Wilfred Zaha who may leave this transfer window. But if rumoured it'll go every single window. I think personally if they sold Zaha for anything over 40 million, I feel like it's a very good price to sell him for. And you can definitely get decent replacements in with that. I think the problem with Palace is they don't invest too much money, just like Burnley, they don't invest much money into the squad, but they're happy to bring it in. Like they got 50 million for Juan Bazaka and they still haven't really spent any of that. I'm not a big fan of Roy Hodgson either, I don't think he's the best manager in the world, but I think he'll do enough just to keep them up. In 16th place, I've gone with West Ham United. I feel like they'll just about stay up again this season. I feel like there's too many things going off the field that will impact them massively. Obviously, the fans are in a massive protest at the minute to get the JSB out of their club, which are the owners of West Ham. They've also got some fantastic players like Pablo Fornells, Sebastian Halle, Felipe Anderson, Declan Rice, Suchek, the list goes on. I just, just don't feel David Moyes is a very good manager at all. He's got many clubs relegated. He's also done quite well at a few clubs, to be fair to him, but he's also left a lot, a lot worse than when he came. Coming up at number 15, I've got the championship winners from last season, Leeds United. I feel like they'll finish, you know, comfortably in the table. That You know, for the first season in the Premier League, your aim should just be to stay up. I feel like that's what Leeds will do. So they've obviously spent £30 million on Rodrigo and they've spent £14 million on centre mid as well. So I've, they've done some great business so far and they've obviously spent £15 million on Helder Costa. But they're not afraid to splash the cash really this summer. I feel like the real problem for Leeds is in the defensive slash goalkeeping areas. I saw the mistake Kiko Casilla made in the preseason friendly that they won 3 1. I feel like they really do need to sign a centre back as well. Obviously, Ben White has gone back to Brighton and it's not looking good for Leeds in the defensive area. If Leeds do sign a centre back, I can definitely see them doing even better. 
In 14th place, I've gone for Newcastle United. I'm not too sure whether they'll do it as great this season as they are expecting right now. Currently on the day I'm recording this, they've just signed Ryan Fraser on a free and Callum Wilson for 20 million. So it's proven this summer that they're not afraid to splash the cash. They spent 15 million the other day they spent on a left back as well. So it's proven that Newcastle are willing to splash the cash this summer. I feel they'll do more than enough to stay up and maybe even push for top 10 this season. But I just don't think that like, the players will gel all that much this season. But their attack is absolutely fantastic now. Maybe they could do with another centre back because I know Charles not not favoured too much at Newcastle right now. And maybe they could do with a better centre back. But you've got a great keeper in Dubravka and maybe a new right back as well. In 13th place, I've gone for Brighton and Hove Albion. I've predicted them to do quite a bit better than they've done this season. Potter has played some amazing football this season for Brighton and he's took them to their highest finish, well, their highest points in the Premier League that they have got. They've massively improved this summer, signing Adam Lallana on a free transfer. They've obviously signed Joel Veltman on for 950,000. That's a great deal they've got there in Ajax centre back. I feel like they've already got a good call to the squad. Maybe they could do a sort in the centre mid though. I feel like they need to ship one or two away. They obviously got rid of Aaron Moy, who I thought was a very good centre mid, but obviously he's not needed at Brighton anymore with the signing of Lallana. So I feel Brighton will finish comfortably mid table and there'll be no worries about them going down this season. In 12th place, I've gone for my club Burnley. I feel like we'll do a bit worse than last season just because of the teams around us have massively invested in the squad and we've made one signing this summer, which is Will Norris. Hopefully by the time you've seen this, we've made another signing, but it's not looking too good at the minute. Why is it not looking good at the minute? Oh, because James Tarkowski has come out today and said that he would favour a move away to a bigger club. Nick Paul's is linked with Chelsea, but it's looking like they're going to be signing a French goalkeeper instead. Blair Manil obviously linked to Leicester and a few other clubs like Juventus, Man United, but I personally don't see him going this. Dyche has come out and said he wants free transfers and he reckons there will be free by the end of the window. So hopefully we can get three or four more players into this club because we're very lined to our feet as it is, and especially if we're going to lose even more players. In 11th place, I've gone with Southampton. I feel like they're doing a lot better than people are actually expecting this season. They've made some incredible signings so far. They got rid of Hojberg for 15 million, and it wasn't looking too good. I feel like Southampton really need to strengthen that defence. It wasn't the best, was it, with Vestergaard at Stevens and Yoshida at the back. Ward Prowse has just got in the England squad as well, so he's doing a fantastic job and finally getting the recognition he does deserve. Obviously, Danny Ings, he's been fantastic last season, and only time will tell if he can carry that form on for next season. If he is in the same form again next season, I feel like it'll, it'll boost Southampton up the table massively. In 10th place, they're going to a very controversial one, and I've actually put Leicester City. I know what you won't be happy with that, I know there's a lot of Leicester fans that follow me, so I do apologise about this, but I just don't think you will do as well as you can. If you sign Tarkowski, maybe you could do better. But since January, Leicester for me have been awful. They've been dreadful. They lost to us. They lost to Southampton, a team they beat 9-0 early in the season. They lost 2-1 to at home. I think Leicester just took a massive decline since January. In ninth place, I've gone with Everton. They've made some fantastic signings already. You know, they've signed Alan from Napoli for about £35 million. I think that's a great, great signing. Uh, obviously, Ancelotti has got a massive pull now. He used to be Napoli manager, so he's bringing a lot of his own players over. I feel like that would massively help Everton. They spent a lot of money in the past. They spent so much money. They spent £50 million with Charleston, and they just spent loads of money in every position, and they've not really had anything to show for it. They've not got Europa League football in so long that the money they're spending just doesn't really equivalent to anything. I still don't think Everton will really get anything this season. It'll obviously take a few more years of Ancelotti rebuilding the squad and then they can finally push for Europe. Okay, so in 8th place, I've gone with Sheffield United. They've just signed the duo from Derby. So they just signed the duo from Derby in Bogle and Lowe. I feel like they're two great signings. They got them on the cheat. They offer about 10 million for the ball for them, which is a fantastic deal for Sheffield United. I feel like they could do with a better striker. I don't think McGoldrick's there. I don't think Billy Sharp can do it anymore. And they just need an all-out all striker that can really get goals for them. Obviously, Chris Wilder's done a fantastic job in his first season in the Premier League. I feel like it'll even improve this season with the signing he has made. In seventh place, I've gone for Wolverhampton Wanderers. They've got no Europa League to focus on this season, so I feel like they could do it a bit better than they did last season. Obviously, they missed out last season on Europa League because Arsenal won the FA Cup. In all hopes that a top six client do actually win the FA Cup this season, Wolves could actually find themselves in Europa League again next season. 
In six players, we've gone with Spurs. I feel like if they get Harry Kane back fit and scoring, it'll do even better than he did in previous seasons. He's obviously coming into his prime now. I think he's about 26, 27. So he's coming into his prime years now as a Premier League. You know, he's not young anymore. He's getting into his prime years. And hopefully he can start scoring a lot more for Spurs. We've also got Son, who's a fantastic player. Lucas Moura, Stephen Bergwijn, Deli Alley. The list goes on for fantastic players that Spurs have got. In fifth place, we've gone with Arsenal. I feel like that with the signings that are going to make, they will do fantastic this season. They had a bit of an off-season, but then Arteta came in and sort of sorted it all out. So fair play to Arsenal for sorting it out the second half of the season. I think if Arteta was there all last season with Pepe coming into his second year now, I feel like I could do it even better. Obviously, Emery left them in a bit of a bad spot coming into the new year, and Arteta has just completely sorted it out. And you know, he, he got them into the Europa League next season, which is a massive result. With Pepe coming to his second year, it'll really show how good he is, and I feel like he will have a very good season. Aubameyang, obviously Aubameyang and Lacazette, I feel like he just had a bit of an off-season, so if he's back scoring next season, it'll be fantastic. Now, 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 in fourth place, I've gone for last season's champions, Liverpool. I know what you're thinking, right, but hear me out. You look at the teams that have put above Liverpool, and they've all invested massively, massively into their squad, even this summer, and especially this summer. So Liverpool, they want you to spend £30 million on Thiago. Thiago, he's such a good player, and for £30 million, absolute bargain. I just feel Liverpool won't have as good a season as they did last year. There's only so much Klopp can do with competing against the sides that are investing millions and millions into their squad. So yeah, Liverpool fourth. I do apologise, Liverpool fans. I know. I hope you do better. I don't actually mind Liverpool at all. I think they're, like, they're quite decent and the fans are very sound as well. Coming into the top three now, on third, I've put Manchester United. They actually finished third this season, so fair play to United for doing that. They also had a few questions towards the midpoint of the season where they were losing to clubs like Burnley. I just wanted to put that in, in the video. So they didn't lose to Burnley 2 not Old Trafford. <laughs> they obviously went 40 million on Donny van der Beek this transfer window so far. And I expect them to make more signings, potentially even of Jadon Sancho, even though he's been linked for such a long time. And the deal's been off and on about 20 times. So it's hard to know what to believe in terms of Manchester United news right now. But if Sancho does come through, definitely top three. I reckon he will. Even though every time I've seen Sancho play, he's not been that great. So, the two teams we've got left are Chelsea, who have invested so much money into their squad this season, and Manchester City, who have spent so much money throughout the course of the past few years. And the team I've gone second with is Chelsea. I've come with Chelsea to finish second this season. I feel like all the players won't gel properly at the start of the season. So they might have a very slow start, but I feel like once they get into their stride, is there any stopping them? I personally don't think there is. The players they've got in that squad, whether they're just to the Premier League standards, who will know? Kai Havertz, who's obviously from the Bundesliga, so is Timo Werner, and Ziyech is from Holland, so that might not be too good. The only thing that can benefit Chelsea is that they're all proven in the Champions League etc. That would be good for Chelsea, obviously Frank Lampard has done a fantastic job with the Chelsea sign last season to finish top four with that side after selling your best player and being on transfer and bar goal. I feel like he's done a fantastic job and next season with all these great players that he's brought in can only do even better. The only negative I can see from Chelsea is their defence and their goalkeeper. Personally Kurt Zuma, Christiansen and Aspel Quetta, they're not Premier League players anymore, same with Alonso as well. I know Reese James will probably come into the starting 11 a lot more next season, but they desperately need a good left back that can consistently play. Maybe someone like Jamal Lewis would fit, and obviously they want a good goalkeeper. And I'm pretty sure they're signing someone from France, so a fair play to Chelsea. I think I'll have a cracking season next year, just please don't beat us 4 0 again at Turf. Obviously, I already announced it, but Manchester City are the team that have gone to win the league. Guardiola, well, what a manager, he's won so much in his career. And he's just got the experience, I feel, to bring City through. Obviously, at Manchester City, he does have a lot of money to spend. And, you know, fair play, if you've got the money there to spend, why not spend it? I think, like, he spent the money quite well this summer already. You know, £40 million on Ake, £40 million on Ferran Torres. That is two fantastic players, especially Ferran Torres. I feel like he's definitely one for the future. And not, many too, and not too many people talking about him. You know, let me know what you think. Who is going to win the league? Who is going to get relegated next season? I want you to tell me down below. Thank you so much for watching the video. And if you have enjoyed it, make sure to consider subscribing and liking the video. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.